Hey now, and welcome to the Food Network, Part 4. In this video, we're going to finish looking at the second agricultural revolution by asking this essential question, how can the relative location of activities, such as farming, be accurately predicted? And now we're going to look at one of the most important spatial models that deals with geography. The model was developed by Johann Heinrich von Thunen, a German who wrote a treatise in 1826 called The Isolated State. Von Thunen created this model of agricultural land use before industrialization had really taken root. In his model, he established a series of concentric rings in which he looked at various crops and land use. And according to von Thunen, the most important variable to consider was transportation. In order to make this a viable model, Von Thunen had to make certain assumptions in order to simplify the real world and focus on the most important variables. So bear in mind, these assumptions were intended. As the name would suggest, the city would be located centrally within an isolated state, meaning that it would have no contact with the outside world. Even though this is not entirely accurate to the world as we know, it actually is not that far away from the pre-industrial world that he lived in. So the isolated state would be surrounded by wilderness. Additionally, the land would be completely flat and have no rivers or mountains. So that would mean that the city would be located on an isotropic flat plain. The soil quality and climate would be consistent in all directions. And farmers would transport their own goods to market via ox cart across land directly to the central city, meaning that there are no roads. And as one would have to assume in any true economic model, the farmers would have to behave rationally to maximize their profits. Okay, so here we go. In the first ring, you would find things such as dairying, market gardening, even the production of flowers very close to the city. This is what we call intensive agriculture, which is a system characterized by the high cost of land and agricultural production, involving higher than normal use of inputs such as money, labor, or heavy use of pesticides and fertilizers relative to the land area. According to von Thunen, because these products were bulky and highly perishable, meaning they would go rotten or spoil quickly, over time, through trial and error, these farmers would earn the greatest profits closer to the market. And in the second ring, there would be a forest. Now, of course, at that time, wood was necessary for fuel, for cooking, and for building materials. Today, we rarely see this kind of instance around modern villages or towns. It would be in the second ring because the cost of transporting lumber would be extremely expensive. And then we get to the third ring, with increasingly extensive field crops and grains. Now you can see the image of the men threshing the wheat at the top, and then of course a modern combine shown in the bottom. Now this is extensive agriculture, which is a system characterized by relatively small inputs of labor, fertilizers, and money relative to the area being farmed. In this instance, extensive farming refers to large-scale growing of wheat, barley, and other grain crops, which are lighter and much less perishable, making the transportation cost relatively low. And finally, according to von Thunen, you would have the fourth ring, which would involve ranching and livestock. Because these animals would be self-transporting, not knowing that they were walking themselves to their own doom, they would be the furthest away from the city, since this would be the cheapest transportation possible. And this is also an example of extensive agriculture. So, now there's the question of whether or not von Thunen's model actually does represent the real world. Well, as you can see here, for example, if you added one simple variable such as a navigable river or a road or a highway, obviously it breaks down. But let's take one look at a national scale example. And please forgive the detail of this map. Now this represents what the agricultural land use would be if the most basic assumptions were applied namely the market located in one place, in this case, New York City, crops being ranked by comparative land paying abilities, and considering ubiquitous geographical characteristics. Although this representation has some level of concordance with reality, it inaccurately portrays agricultural land use in the United States. So is there any way to save von Thunen? Well, if we make one supplementary assumption that considers climate variations where the North is colder than the South, then this actually works in some way. You see, this constraint has a significant impact on agricultural land use, as even if for a location a crop would have a higher rent-paying ability, another crop would be grown because climatic conditions forbids it. 
such as specialty crops like oranges down in South Florida. The resulting agricultural land use has a much higher level of correspondence with reality. So we can conclude that in some capacity, that Thunian patterns can still be seen sometimes in the real world today. Not too shabby for a model made back in 1826. Hi, how are you? Pretty good, how are you? Doing good, what can I get for you today? I'll start with a taco, soft like a cloud. I want mine crunchy, I like to eat loud. I'll choose a chalupa, I'll grab a bordita. And two taco salads for our senoritas. And a burrito supreme, with extra sour cream. A cylindrically sheep, seasoned beef dream. A taquito, a chorito, some cinnamon twists. A chicken border bowl. Are you getting all this? <laughs> All right, so tackle. And you know that nothing beats a Mexican pizza. We'll take two of those. But please hold the dice tomatoes. And I admit I've always felt I'm in love with a Mexi man. Make mine with a little extra love and think of me. As the cheese drops from your Taco Bell glove. And that's it. No, 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 that's not it. I also want a double-decker taco cause I'm feeling wild and make my sauce fire. Uh, he'll take my own. And we'll take two Mountain Dew Baja Blast for a chance at $25 cash. I'm told there's a winner for every five minutes. But I'm stealing your online code if you win it. Why would you do that? You owe me 25 bones. I owe you five. Plus interest, it was a loan. And I think we'll be sad. If we get some Mexican rice on the side. Yeah, sir, we care what's on drink. Yeah, the Mountain Dew Baja Blast, oh, too. Oh, we got a $2 box. Okay, can we repeat the order back to you? Yeah, go for it. All right, soft taco, a hard taco, a chalupa, a gordita, two taco salad for the lady, a burrito supreme with extra sour cream, a cheesy fiesta potatoes, and chorito, cinnamon twist, Dusty chicken bowl with two Mexican pizza, but hold the tomatoes. Double decker tacos, two large by our blast, and a side of rice. Is that correct, sir? <laughs> uh, you're pretty amazing. I, I think that's it. <laughs> 4269, drive around right to the hotel. All right. All right. <laughs> How did that guy do that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Gracious. Yeah. So now we have to actually purchase the food, I guess. <laughs>